Today I'm going head to head with two 12 inch Roland electronic drum pads. The Roland PD128SBC, basically Roland's flagship analog centre cone pad, and the Roland PDA120LBK, a more budget friendly option from the VAD line that uses the newer three cone setup. I'll be comparing the price, the build and aesthetics, the trigger performance on various modules, and ultimately finding out which one offers the best value for your needs. Both of these pads are available in snare and tom versions and all that really amounts to is whether or not it comes with a tom mount attached like this. I've got the snare version of the PD128 with no mount and the tom version of the PDA120L with the bracket. I bought my PDA120L BK for £211 which it's still available for from one site but it's generally anything up to about £230 in the UK with the LS snare version being up to £250. I bought the PD 128 SBC for £369, whereas the Tom version with the mount was available for about £399. And that is a significant difference in price for two pads that will be primarily used in very similar ways. So does this nearly doubling of price get you nearly double the pad? That's debatable. Build wise, the PDA120L definitely feels a little bit cheaper. It's got a thin wooden shell with pretty standard metal lugs, a trim around the bottom to protect the edge, and the trigger is installed into the shell in a trigger basket, as are most recent Roland pads. The PD128 surprisingly also seems to be made of some kind of wood, but it's painted and covered in a black chrome wrap. It has a thick plastic rim around the bottom with these heavy duty tube style lugs, and the trigger is once again in a basket but with a different design. The PD-128 is heavier by about a kilogram or two and a half pounds between the equivalent versions. So the 128 does feel a bit more premium, but there's not really a great deal in it overall. Both pads are fitted with the same two ply Roland mesh heads, which I think are pretty great. They're not my absolute favorite, but I think they're one of the better two ply heads out there personally. And the last notable difference from the outside is that the PDA120L has a thinner, more slimline rubber rim than the PD128 does. Opening the pads up, you get to the triggers. This is the real difference between these two pads. The PD128 is using Roland's older center mount trigger design, which is made to support positional sensing on both the head and the rim zones, whereas the PDA120L uses the newer three cone approach which was designed to remove the centre hotspot, but this is at the cost of losing positional sensing on the head. The PDA120L does actually support rim positional sensing to some degree, and I'll get into exactly what that means in the next section. In terms of performance, both of these triggers are very sensitive on both the head and the rim zones. I've tested each of them on various Roland modules and as you would expect, they work really well on the presets that are designed for them. For my playing style, I personally reduce the sensitivity a little bit from the stock settings, sometimes bringing up the rim gain, but this is entirely personal so you'll need to find the balance for you. They also dial in well overall on other modules.
regardless of the module that you're using these pads with, there are some consistent quirks that are unique to each pad due to their designs. We'll start off with the PD128 and I have to admit that I've never been a big fan of center cone triggers. It doesn't really seem to matter how much balancing I do of the settings, the hot spot in the center of the pad is always too severe for me to ignore. I have heard the argument that it's more realistic for the centre to be hotter, especially when used in conjunction with positional sensing. Acoustic drums are generally louder in the centre, sure, but the dynamics when you're playing don't spike in velocity. And in my opinion, it should be the samples that are making that distinction, not the response of the trigger pad itself. When I first got the pad, I was really hoping that Roland's triggers would be less hot spotty than other brands that I've used, but it's just a pretty unavoidable part of this design. There's a hotspot suppression setting on the eDrum in that probably does the best job of making this more usable. The positional sensing with this pad also works really well on a module that supports it too. If you don't need positional sensing though, I find it really hard to recommend a centre trigger like this these days over another side trigger option. If you have a TD50X, TD50 or TD27, there's not really any reason to use this over the digital snare unless you need an extra snare that requires positional sensing. In fact, personally, I also wouldn't bother using it for toms either because the positional sensing for toms isn't actually used on the head zone of a Roland module. I think this might be a bit of a common misconception. When you're using the internal sounds on a Roland module, the positional sensing for toms is actually only detecting the difference between rim shots and rim clicks. And this is all down to the onboard sounds. However, the module is still detecting the position and it does send out the MIDI CC data for position on the toms. So if you're running a VST that has positional samples for the tom head zone, then you might still have a reason to use these pads as toms. And of course, if they come as part of a full kit that you've bought, then obviously they're gonna do the job. Otherwise, I think this is an older style of trigger setup that's kind of run its course for anything other than this one purpose. That and these pads are really, really expensive. On the other hand, I really enjoyed playing the PDA120L and I find it much more consistent overall. The center hotspot is completely gone, which is great, and for that reason alone, I prefer using this pad. However, you do still get slight hotspots if you play directly over any of the three cones. Now this is to be expected with any trigger and fortunately the hotspots aren't as dramatic as the one on the PD128. More noticeable than this, at least for me, is that you get quite obvious cold spots in between the cones when you're playing towards the edge. Again, this is something that I knew could happen from a previous three cone trigger that I tried out, but I kind of expected that it would be less noticeable on one of Roland's own pads. Fortunately, in the majority of playing scenarios, this is far more avoidable than the center hotspot of the PD-128, just because of the position. <laughs> 
using the appropriate trigger curve for your playing style also really helps even things out. Of course though, there is no positional sensing with this pad's head zone on any module at the moment, so you will need to be sure that you're happy with that. Now, technically speaking, there's not supposed to be rim positional sensing on these pads either. If you use the PDA120L preset on the TD50X or TD27, positional sensing is disabled for the head and rim. But if you swap over to the PDA120 preset, which is intended for the larger 12 inch VAD TOM that comes with the 506 and 706 kits, the rim positional sensing is enabled for that preset and it works completely fine on this pad. So that gives me head, rim alone, and rim shot articulations. So which pad is the better proposition? Personally, I think the PDA120L pad offers the best all-round value of these two as either a snare or tom pad for the majority of people. If you don't need positional sensing, the PDA120L is cheaper, offers a more consistent triggering experience, looks a bit more acoustic-like if that's what you're into, and you can still get the majority of the same articulations out of it by selecting the right settings on a module that supports them. If your module doesn't support those articulations, then there was little reason to get the PDA120L PD128 before this pad existed, and now there's even less. The PD128 isn't completely redundant. If you do want a 12 inch Roland pad that supports positional sensing really well, then it's probably going to be the best option currently available. There are cheaper alternatives from other brands, or there are older Roland 12 inch center cone pads, but this does the job that it's designed for well if you can live with the hotspot. If you liked any of the sounds that I used in my demonstrations, check out my store over at theedrumworkshop.com. I've got kit and samples that are compatible with the current Roland modules, the Pearl Mimic Pro, the Elisis Strike module and more. Also let me know down in the comments what you think of these two pads. But above all, enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!